Let's consider a scenario where you get a bunch of audio files along with a CSV file containing metadata, for example from an automated analysis. Let's furthermore assume we want to expose a web API to start multi-track playback of these files via standard HTTP GET requests. We're going to set up our max patch as follows. To demonstrate multi-track playback, let's just add three buffers with three waves objects along with a phaser to trigger playback. Of course, we will also need a node script object for this. We initialize a node project and add two dependencies, express itself and CSV parse for parsing CSV files. Let's create a server.js file and open it. First, we need to set up our express server, which we do by requiring the module and instantiating an app. Then define an Express.js route like this. The colon ID part of the route denotes a dynamic segment and will be replaced by whatever ID you specify in your GET request. We'll get to that later. Now here's the trickiest part of the JavaScript part. Parsing the supplied CSV file and returning the relevant row. For that we are going to use an npm package called CSV parse. It's used as follows. We're going to require the parse method and instantiate a parser. It receives an empty options object and a callback containing the parse data as a function argument. Let's leave the function body empty for a second and pipe the CSV files contents into the parser using fs.create read stream. What are the contents of that file anyway? To demonstrate this, I've just listed the sound files names in it. Within the function body, first we make sure that we return an OK HTTP response to the request. We do not need to return more than that, since all we want to do is issue a command to max, which we will do next. At the node scripts outlet, we are going to provide a JSON object containing the track number, which we pass to the request as a query parameter as a key and the row corresponding to the specified sound ID. In this case, this simply matches the row number, so we can call data square brackets rec dot params dot ID. Below we'll start the server and have it listen on port 5000. In the max patch, the created JSON object is represented as a dict. Let's just connect that and make sure things work so far. OK, great. Now we need to come up with some custom dict logic here. With every call to our express server, we'd like to merge this dict into the already existing so as not to stop playback but simply start another track. There's actually a quite simple way to do this with dict.join, but we need to add a timing tweak. If we take a look at the dict.join help patch, it says, if two dictionaries are joined and both contain the same key, the key in the dictionary being joined right inlet overrides the key for the dictionary input left inlet. Now this is exactly our situation. When a new sound should be played back for a certain track, we need to override the key i.e. pass the new dict in on the right hand side and create a new dict to store the current contents of the merged dicts. That object's outlet goes into the left hot inlet of the dict join. 
Now our patch is set up to replace old keys with new ones while retaining the rest of the dict contents. All we need to do now is trigger the update process of dict join with a bang to the storage dict and we are going to do this with a trigger bang list. That way we can ensure that first the new JSON object from the node script is passed to dict join and only afterwards is the merge triggered. Okay, last but not least, we'd like to pass the sound file names to the buffers and we're going to use dict iter to iterate over the contents of our dict. Using route 012, the quotes are necessary in this case, we send them to the appropriate paths in our patcher. Of course, you could also use a poly object here. I've prepared a little sub patch returning the absolute path of the sound file. Then prepend replace and off we go. Let's open the browser and see if we get some sound output. So using some very basic backend JavaScript and dict magic, we created a versatile sound player. The obvious reason why you'd like to do something like that is that you can plug any frontend that speaks HTTP to this, be it a HTML website, a command line tool, another web service or whatever.